would like to introduce our first speaker of the day. Uh, please give a big round of applause for Emad. Hello. Okay, it's fine. So I hope you enjoyed last night. And it was great for me. And so before the conference began, I asked Chris to move me on the first day. They said, no, it's a Swift UI day and you belong to the fun day. So today is the fun day. So no Swift UI, I hope. And uh, so let's begin. My name is Emad. I'm solution architect and lead developer in a new company. I started uh, 1st of July uh, in Denmark. I moved to Denmark five years ago. I'm Iranian and I have seen so many Iranian here. I really appreciate and you are doing great. Uh, I'm also doing video instruction and article in Codeco or old Ray Vanderlich and the whole idea of this talk coming from one of my video courses in, in their website. That's why I'm here. I'm not doing any health related job e every day. The Acubis, the company is a financial company. We are doing expense management system and all sort of boring thing that you don't like, I assume. But before that I was in a taxation ministry in Denmark. Uh, I worked there for year and a half, but in general, uh, I started mobile development, I think, 10 years ago. And right now I'm here. Let's begin. So I have a live demo today. Bear with me and let's see how it goes. But before the demo, let's go with agenda. So I'm going to go through all these six steps, introduction, all the Apple health frameworks, Health kit, care kit, research kit, and best practices and conclusion. So if you have any question or anything, just keep it in your mind. We have like 15 10, no, to 20 minutes at the end. And I try to be quick if I could. I add more content. Introduction. So when I'm talking about Apple Health Frameworks, it's not Health Kit. It's all different kits. And you can do a lot with them. And it's not only for the health purposes, you can use it. There are lots of different tools. You can use it for different purposes than health. But the important part is open source. Apple finally did something open source before Swift and everything. Uh, they did this uh, open source a couple of years ago. And uh, it's out there. You can use, contribute, do whatever you like, like Swift these days and also has a lot of prepared UI components that you can use. The next thing is it's trusted by user because it doesn't store any data anywhere else and it doesn't, you can save it anywhere you like, but uh, it's, it can be stored in the, in the iPhone or iCloud and it's free. So you don't need to pay anything to get those frameworks. So I love AI. I have another talk in a couple of weeks in US about AI and ICE programming. If you like, you can join me over there. So I did this magically elevate your health anytime, any place. That's the time I need to show you something on my phone. If I could. Yep. There you go. So for my video course, I made this app. It seems a bit weird. Let's put it in here. It's better. So it's on my phone and it's called My Vaccine. It took me a year almost to prepare that video course because I got COVID two times during the <laughs> preparation. It was really bad. And it, it is about uh, vaccination and COVID everything. So every time I'm supposed to prepare anything for this course, it's just, holy shit, COVID again. So it's an app. You can start with a task. I didn't do any UI related. That's why I said it's not Swift UI thing today, but they have Swift UI as well. You can contribute to that. But all this app is using all the Apple components without me doing anything. It's just using CareKit UI for preparing this app. So bear with me. Uh, there is an onboarding task. I press begin. 
welcome. Go next. Before you start, you need to uh, conform to this, whatever, I sign it. You can clear sign and do it again. I go here. I hope it works. It's been two years. So I press health. I allow to read or write data. I press review notification. I allow it. And device motion. Yes. Nice. It worked. Uh, done. Next task is vaccination task. So I press begin. It show me a survey. I can get started. When is my birthday? Was a year ago. Uh, what vaccine I chose? I got Pfizer. I was lucky. Uh, when was it? A month ago? Or, yeah, a couple of days ago, maybe. And task is completed. Next task is the check-in task. So I press begin. How's your tiredness? Or do you have any headache? Do you have muscle pain? What's your temperature? <laughs> and <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And done. So the check-in task is done. I can see it's completed. There is nothing to see in the detail page. Next day, I can go with other tasks. In a couple of days, I can go with more check-in. And after a week, you can see if you can. There is a range of motion. I forgot to enable it. Sorry, I was drunk last night. I had to enable it to be able to show you something. but. Maybe if you had time. But the, the idea of the range of motion is i supposed to put my phone here and raise my hand. And it, it, it actually checked the, the angle of my uh, hand, how much I could bring it up. And it record that by just putting the phone here. Sorry. Uh, yes, let's move back to my presentation. So what are the Apple Health frameworks? We have a couple of different frameworks. One of them called HealthKit. You might know it. It's, you can collect and store data, analyze, and do visualization, any health or fitness data using that HealthKit. The next one is CareKit. It's, it's like a tracking or reminder thing. Uh, and it has like charts. It has like notification feature, contact page, and everything. There is another one called Research Kit. All those tasks you saw, like consent when you sign, or survey function when, you, when we were just checking my temperature, and the active tasks, like the hand thing we had. It's in Research Kit. And exposure notification that you worked with, I think, Joseph, but it's mainly for government usage and it's fully anonymous when they announce it for COVID and checking how, like if you were exposed to COVID by any other people which were close to you and I haven't worked with that. I have no idea about it. Uh, so let's focus on health kit. Yes, another demo. So, for all of the sections I prepared, uh, I didn't prepare, I just installed the sample project from Apple, and I'm just demoing the Apple app. It's not my app, and so the HealthKit app is a smooth walker, which they like it in Apple. Uh, when you open the app, it asks you to give access to steps, turn on, allow. It shows me how many steps I took, uh, and it's real data. I actually walked other day 13,000 steps. Uh, yes. Uh, there are more. So there is a chart. And it's not the Swift UI chart. They just did that by, I don't know what, maybe CareKit? I don't remember. Uh, and then weekly report. Every time I open any tab, it asks me for access because they don't need all the data if you. 
Yes, and weekly report. That was it. So Apple did this for you. It's open source. You can download the project. You can see all the steps. But let's move on. What does Apple Health Kit has? So there are four different areas, soon-ish more. But the first area is the health data. Whatever data you have, it's going to be stored in the health kits somewhere in iCloud when you open the app, the health app for, on your phone, you have all the data over there. It's, it's one single source of truth, and that's it. If you make any apps, you actually work with that source of truth. You can write data, you can read data, you can manipulate, you can do whatever you want by getting access from the user. So the next one is the iPhone. By iPhone, you can have different data writing to that core. It's called, there are like different names and Apple loves to call everything in a weird way in my opinion. So HK means health kit, samples, health kit category, quantity, workout, a lot of different samples you have in the, in the health data. And then you have another source to gather info. It's Apple Watch, lots of sensors. Uh, and in general, when you are storing or retrieving any data from HealthKit, it gives you a, an HK object. It has type, it has value, device, time, and some metadata. So when you are reading or writing, you have, you're working with that type or object. And then everything is stored, yeah, it's called HK Health Store. In iCloud, and there are lots of different query that you can use to get data or write data, uh, like workout route query, statistic query, activity summary, and all these is available for you to use. It's not only one or two, or you might have heard about health kits and you're working with one query to get everything you don't need to. You can work with any different queries to get data. Uh, but the app that I showed you, I didn't use any of this. It's, it's mainly CareKit, my app. So, but the only thing I used is two different query to two different data. As you saw in the app, there was one body temperature and a fever that I calculate. So I make a type, it's quantity type for the quantity and category for the category, like fever, there is not much you can do, it's not numbers that much. Then I do some calculation down here, making different categories, and then use the S-Store, and check if I have access to the S-Store, then I save the data as a fever sample and temperature sample. That was the only thing I should do regarding the, the health kit and storing all the data from my app in the health. And whatever I, I added to my app now is in my health data. I can show you afterward. So let's go to CareKit. In CareKit, should I demo that? No, yeah. In CareKit, we have, if I could go less fast, we have two different sections. One is CareKit UI. All those UI you saw in the app, my vaccine app, is coming from CareKit UI. It's prepared for you, all different cards, all the calendars and charts and everything is prepared. You just need to feed in data and then show the UI by a couple of lines code. There is nothing that you sh should customize. If you want, you can give it a style. And there are also UI kit and Swift UI in the care kit. You can just style it or even add your own view to it. But generally speaking, you just can use the UI without any customization or any knowledge in the UI. And then we have care kit store. It's just a wrapper on top of health kit uh, that uh, has different schema and store your data in a right way. And you have task, you have task query, as I said. It's like OCK, CK means care kit. I don't know what O is, uh, but, and there is another one coming soon. And 
I got confused all the time with all this acronym. So we have a Kirkit UI that has a task. So each of these are different tasks. Simple task, instruction, grid, checklist, or button log. And to making those, you just initiate a task view, give it a title and detail, and some description, and you can say if it's selected or not like this. And at the end, when it's completed, what will happen, or whatever you like to do with that. So these couple of lines is needed to make a view, nothing more. Another one, we have charts. So before they release Swift UI charts, they release this. So you could use these charts without doing anything. Just make a chart view, give it a type, bar, whatever, line, and then title and the source data. And a contact page. So contact page is just a simple contact page that Apple love, and you can just feed in data, and then it makes you everything. So the important part is care to the store. When users interact with those data on the task level, how you could get data back? It's just when you make a task up there, and then add another task or update it, and at the end you can get a completion handler or a closure when you call fetch tasks and get the data. How the hell you know the data structure? I'll tell you in a bit. But before that, yes. Oh, before that, let's take a look at the CareKit catalog. It's it's the it's the app that Apple prepared. I can show you its CareKit catalog. So this is the app. We have all different tasks here. Grid task, checklist, instruction, and you can see all those has like detail page, and if you look uh, up, there is Swift UI and UI kit. So you can use any of those in your project. Uh, numeric progress or button log. Contact page, simple page with all those fancy, it has also FaceTime apparently. Uh, and charts, lovely. Uh, yeah. You can see any of those UI in the, in the catalog app from Apple. Let's move back to the project. So if you noticed in my app, uh, there is a calendar. And in each day, we have different tasks. When you press that task, it shows you a survey. So there is a OCK store manager. That's my uh, database, I could say. And then uh, for each day, I have different OCK tasks. Just remember these names. It's a bit weird because there is another one, ORK task. It's a survey task from Research Kit. And there are different classes in my code that you can check out at the end uh, or at your home. And uh, there's a task manager that I handle all the care kit task, which is just the UI part. And then there is a survey manager that I handle all those data coming out of the survey. So just quick look at the CareKit store schema. So we have one patient that has a care plan, all those uh, calendar thing, and different tasks, and a contact. And tasks can have schedule, like after a week or three days, I ask a user to, let's raise your hand to see how long, how, how far you can go up because we've all been there, it's hard. Uh, and there is an outcome of those tasks. Let's go. Research kit. So I think it's nice to go back to my app to just grab your 
uh, info again. So there is a calendar up there, different tasks. And then these are all care kit. When I press begin, this is research kit. So all these surveys coming from research kit. You have different type of ORK task, which is an actual research kit task. It can be anything. But behind this result, this page, all these coming from care kit. So scheduling different tasks after a week, show that, or after two weeks, show another task. It's coming from care kit. Let's go back to research kit. So what do we have on research kit? We have informed consent. You can show different info in the web view or any data you have. You need to get approval from user that you are doing this on your own risk or whatever. You can get a signature. You can do every, every little thing that every different form of the consent is there prepared for you. And then we have survey function. All those instruction, question, form, video, everything is on the survey functions. And we have active tasks. This is the one that I love. I'll show you in a bit different type of active tasks. But this is the one that works with all the sensors on your phone or on the Apple Watch or on the Vision, Vision Pro. So inform, inform consent, different type as I mentioned. You can have all those if you want. Survey, this is the nice part. The important part in research kit is there is no uh, storage or store manager or anything. It's just on the memory. You have to grab those data out of the survey and save it somewhere, either in the care kit store or health kit store, which doesn't make sense that much at some degree, or in your own database. So when you create ORK task, you have different steps, as we saw early. And then there is a view controller. So research kit is a bit old school. It's, uh, there's no Swift UI. Yeah, I, I didn't check it past few months, but they didn't release any, any huge or major updates for research kit. And then when you're working with that, at the end you get a result. For each step and each task, you have a result type. You have to fetch it. So there is a catalog for that as well. Thanks to Apple, they did great a couple of years ago. They didn't update their app. So research kit catalog. We have different surveys, different questions, uh, onboarding, for example, even login. They prepared everything like uh, grouped form survey, and you have all different style of any survey that you could imagine. And I assume they built this for helping all the institute or any, any, any huge places that they want to do quick research and they don't have that much a developer or time or budget. So the nice part that I really love is the active tasks. So I think shoulder range of motion. So I press this, it asked me to put it here. I'll try without microphone, sorry. So, uh, so there are lots of different things for any, any issue that you might face or you want to 
get data out of it, like speech and noises, speech recognition, and uh, yeah, fitness check, and it, it, audio check, and it, they prepare everything almost. But you can use your, uh, the, the sensors to do your thing as well. I'll tell you how. But when you use the research kit, uh, I've heard you need to get entitlement for the active tasks to be able to do your research officially, but I'm not sure. But for the care kit, you j can just use it. Best practices and conclusion. So the better way of using these different kits are to use it together. So care kit and research kit are the best fit with each other. You can use care kit for the UI part and research kit for the uh, all those surveys and sensors and everything. But the important part is to have some sort of structure around it because you can easily get confused with all those naming and all those different data coming as you saw in the research kit app as well. So I tried this structure to uh, give you some quick uh, overview of how to use those data. So you have to have a care kit task ID and a survey and a store manager and a query for getting data out of the care kit. So my resources, GitHub for care kit and research kit, and they have a website for uh, research kit and care kit. It's public web website from Apple. Uh, WWDC, they skip any new feature on 2022. They just added one series of video how to use this tool, but they did a really good uh, videos on 2022, uh, 2020 and 2021. And 23, they released really nice feature. I'll tell you in a bit. App Mobility Health app, Catalog apps, and Codeco, my, uh, what they call, my video course. One more thing, uh, before the WWDC, I usually tell people what's next. Now I can say one more thing because they finally released Sensor Kit. Sensor Kit is a new framework from Apple. It's almost closed, but you can see all the APIs, but you cannot use it. You need to get official approval from Apple because uh, Sensor Kit. So you can get a lot of data from Sensor Kit. Uh, any routine from the users or any steps or any sensors and if I go to the next page from Apple website you can even get face metrics from the Vision Pro, heart rate, uh, serious speech metrics or keyboard metrics, the way that you type or all, all everything or the temperature from your Apple Watch, or heart, or telephone speech metric when you talk by the phone. So, but it's not public, you cannot just use it and release the app. You need to go here in their website, uh, researchandcarekit.org, and get a proper approval from Apple uh, but they mentioned they have access to messages anonymously, keyboards, device usage, visits, phone usage, everything. And you have to submit your proposal and if it's approved, you get the entitlement. They also released this year Core Motion, a lot of updates for Core Motion to get different data from devices, especially Apple Watch, and Workout Kit, which is getting updated really nice that you can work with the iPhone without the Apple Watch, but get data from Apple Watch if it gets connected. So take a look at WWDC 2023. They didn't mention anything, I, I think, about Sensor Kit, but they put it on their website and documentation and everything. That was it.
So before we move to the questions round, I have a question myself. Um, so you said that the health data and workout data is available in iCloud. Now obviously the Mac doesn't have any active input regarding this kind of data. Is it possible to build a Mac OS app only based on data from the phone or the watch? They announced in WW23 that they brought health app to Mac. I'm not sure if they have health app on the Mac, so you can use health data. If they don't, no. Thank you. Questions? So questions from the audience. Comments? <laughs> Complain? Yes, thank you very much for the interesting talk. Thank you. Um, so the view components of those frameworks seem very general purpose. Are there any guidelines stopping you from using that outside of the health context? Uh, that's the thing. I didn't dig into that much, but mm -hmm. I've seen this component out there in different apps. And there was one person here that I could not find her, that she is over there. She used that. Uh, care kit at the end of the hall, uh, but she didn't release the app, and it was the uh, health related. But there is nothing stop you. There is a, a Swift package from care kit mm -hmm. that you can just add to your project, use the UI, and even there is no need to add anything in info list. So mm -hmm. maybe. Interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. I plan to use that calendar view for my own app. <laughs> it's so nice. More? Hey, uh, great talk. Thank you. So, my question is, did you have first-hand experience with this? Or did you just, uh, like, what's your story? Why did you learn this? Is it curiosity? Or did you build an actual app that did this? So, in Codeco, uh, I usually pick topics that I have no idea about, and I make video courses or ar write articles there to first I learn, and it's the first handed topics. So they usually bring some ideas, and then we pick, and we have only Apple as a source of truth. There is nothing out there. And I dig into those, learn more, and make a video course within a year during Corona, <laughs> but uh, nothing. I have worked as a personal project or any different thing. It's just this app, my vaccine app, and a uh, video course in Codeco, and these talks. I, I got some connection from one person here to Stanford that I could get some hands uh, to, to see if I could do anything with that. Yeah? Understood. Thank you. Welcome. I spent tons of time to make this QR code nice. Please scan it. It's my website. <laughs> <laughs> the QR code looks nice. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, do you know how much of this is actually uh, used by either governments or big companies or whatever? Because it sounds to me like there's a lot of stuff out there, also stuff like fire and whatnot, but I don't know who uses it. So in their website, the internet helped me. Uh, they mentioned which companies are using it, which research institutes are still not working. Uh, yep, but they are using this in different projects and different places, uh, especially with the, uh, they, they actually built research kit first because they needed that uh, for the huge companies and they didn't want to release access to the sensors. They had to build up something on top of that to be able to work with that. Uh, but right now, it's there are some apps they mentioned, mainly in US, uh, 
but reach out to their website. It's a really nice community they have, and they are not that much closed like other uh, Apple developers. They can communicate, they can talk with you, and it's a open source community. Yes. Thanks. Beautiful. Meanwhile. Thank you for the time. I hope you enjoyed the day.